Wolverine the Dying Game. So uh, they actually have come out with a bunch of Wolverine epics in a row now, and I've actually been reading them uh, from 6 and 7. This is Volume 8. Uh, which then Volume 9 is also out, Tooth and Claw. This is 94 to 96, and what's Wolverine 87 to 100, uh, with annual number 95 and a Wolverine uh, graphic novel, Night of Terror, which is kind of a Wolverine graphic novel. I mean, it's got them in it, but it has something else to it. Now, um, I hate this era of comics because I hate the sideways pages. <laughs> the sideways trying to turn your comic, I mean, maybe like in a, a floppy, it works a little bit better, but when you're trying to turn these giant books, it's just annoying uh, on the hands. But Wolverine meets up with Gambit and Madripoor at first. The art's beautiful other than that, by the way. I really enjoy this. It's uh, Adam Kubert on most of this with Larry Hama doing most of the writing. Uh, super dynamic, super action-packed. Wolverine gets accused of busting up a bar and killing some people, and he has to kind of investigate into what goes on. He gets a uh, another crossover with Deadpool after this, uh, which ties into some of the X-Force stuff that's been coming out in the Epic Collections lately also, uh, which is nice because, honestly, the main problem with X-Men in this era is there's so many freaking characters. Like, it's like, you don't know who they are. Look at this beautiful drawing of Wolverine right here. Just uh, an Adam Kubert art is great. He had a crossover with... Uh, 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 Ghost Rider after that, uh, which Ghost Riders in this era with Danny Ketch is a lot of fun too, uh, but it's a, it's a different thing. And then, of course, there's the Sabretooth uh, situation that's going on. Now, Sabretooth's being kept in the um, uh, X-Men mansion. He's kept in a jail for a while, and uh, he they were trying to rehabilitate him, uh, which is stupid. Wolverine said it was stupid. Look at this 90s uh, awesomeness. <laughs> and, of course, it, it ends up being stupid as, as Wolverine eventually... Uh, has a problem as Sabretooth escapes uh, and all that. Now, Wolverine's got problems of his own. Like, since Magneto ripped out his adamantium uh, in Fatal Attractions a couple uh, epic collections ago, he kind of lost himself. Uh, he's now, like, bone, and he's going, like, feral uh, often. And he goes out into the woods, and he, like, is, like, you know, uh, just threatening to off and kill these creatures. These are creatures from a different dimension. Uh, and, of course, the X-Men kind of have to try to hold him back and get him back uh, to his senses at some point. Now, it's a little convoluted. Like, like stuff's progressing uh, in terms of that storyline. And uh, there's a, there's another character who shows up who's uh, trying to, like, bring Apocalypse back from the dead, which which we'll get to in a minute. And that's, like, part of this. And this, like, the, the Wolverine or the Sabretooth thing is kind of a part of it, too, as, as uh, they're amping up the Wolverine versus Sabretooth uh, sort of deal, too. But it really, like, it, it does go from situation to situation with, again, too many characters that's like they expect you to know who they are. And uh, I think that's a little rough on new readers. Now, this Night of Terra thing takes place in uh, a different realm uh, where there's a different versions of the X-Men who are, like, kind of Camelot-type people. And Wolverine gets transported into there, into this. It's it's a non-sequitur for the entire thing. Uh, but it does uh, set up an, an alternate Sabretooth battle with Wolverine uh, in the middle of it before we get back to what happens here uh black tom's back and so is the juggernaut look at this art again just like uh it's so nice to look at and uh it is fa fast paced and even though you've got that kind of like uh convolution to it a little bit it's still a lot of fun uh and i'd say that it still builds nicely and uh it, it really adds a lot to logan's character uh over the course of this and one in one issue we just passed it he uh ends up uh going to the generation x compound and and kind of trading them a little bit and then we get into issue 100 at the end of this where, uh, like I said, uh, it all comes to a head where uh, these these creatures are trying to bring back uh, Apocalypse in a um, uh, alternate reality here uh, in order to uh, make things happen. And, and they uh, are trying to fuse Adamantium back to Wolverine in this as well. And uh, he eventually fights back, uh, takes care of business, and of course Apocalypse does not end up coming back uh, due to this. Uh, and... Uh, Wolverine suffers some loss in the process and ends up uh, kind of really angry and feral at the end of it again uh, for a new era, which will take place in uh, issue 101 in volume nine. So good stuff. Uh, I really enjoyed this. Uh, like I said, the art's beautiful. Uh, I, I do know most of the X-Men storylines at this point. So like I know who the characters are for the most part. Some of them I, I forget because there's just too many of them. Uh, and that is seems to be the weakness in the X line in general. 
Uh, but as things go, this is one of the better titles. And it's so consistent because Larry Hama has written it for, I think, three volumes worth of epic collections now. And that consistency and tone is just super nice uh, because you don't get that a lot. I like that there's callbacks to Madripoor. I like that, you know, Sabretooth is uh, playing a big part in this. Uh, it feels very good. It feels like Wolverine should feel. And that is a good thing. So I call this an 8.5 out of 10 overall, a good epic collection. And I appreciate you guys for being there. Leave a comment down below. Hit the like and subscribe button. We'll be back soon.